by the time your family moved to the Dexter area, was there still a, a store on, in Hastings? Yes. Um, our store was on Brewster and Hastings. And, um, that, and we lived over the store, as I indicated. And the, the city condemned that area. Uh, and built the Brewster Project, which is still there. My dad uh, bought a store down the street about two blocks in Erskine in Hastings. Incidentally, it may be of interest, the Brewster Center was located immediately behind the, uh, our dad's store. And the Brewster Center is still there. And, uh, and that was a city uh, recreation center. And Joe Lewis, when he was a kid, used to, used to train there. And my dad's store was right in front. He had a shoe store, so we used to sell him gym shoes. And uh, as a matter of fact, I remember very well when Joe Lewis was, was winning these fights, the, um, uh, our, we had a, like a bay window over, overhanging Hastings Street. I used to stand in the window watching people celebrating every time Joe Lewis won a fight because he was very, very important in the black area in those days. He was a real hero. And uh, I remember the Max Schmeling fight. And very, very sad because, he, well, you may not know this, but Max Schmeling beat Joe Lewis. He was a German, and uh, it was probably 1934, 1935, something like that. And uh, the street was very quiet and people walking around very, very sad. Now, tell, talk a little bit about the, the whole migration. I mean, at, in the times when you were young, that was all Jewish-run businesses, but but was there sort of a, a migration of, of businesses and people started to move well, out? Yeah, the, w w when we were there, the, uh, there, were still, you know, there were Jewish businesses primarily serving the black population, although there were a few uh, uh, stores still there. For example, there was a place called the Manhattan Restaurant. And if you go on the Lower East Side of New York today, it's the same sort of, uh, sort of a restaurant. You had waiters with greasy tuxedos and a, a towel over their arm and uh, the food was, you know, Jewish food. It was very good, and that's where all the merchants used to eat. We go for lunch and dinner. And but most of the, most of the stores that served the Jewish community had already moved to 12th Street, <clears throat> and the migration was to 12th Street from there. From 12th Street, they went to Dexter. And and I and Linwood. There was another street called Linwood, Dexter and Linwood. They they were in there primarily Dexter. Why do you think that, I mean, why did that, why did that happen? Why well, did those well, several reasons. Uh, number one, as the, most of the uh, merchants and most of the people in Detroit, the Jewish people I'm referring to, were uh, immigrants. And they obviously came in very poor and there were not very many safety nets in those days, practically none. And uh, they, they started small businesses. As it became more prosperous, they moved to better areas, better housing, and so forth. Also, the black population of Detroit was uh, very, very crowded areas because the fact that they could not move in the white areas in those days. And not by law, but uh, so much as, as just by custom. And so uh, that, as that expanded, they, they moved in to, to these, these areas that the, the Jewish uh, uh, people lived in before, which is not unusual. Immigrants come, uh, n n other people come in, and it's happen happening now with the Latinos and so forth. Okay. Um, talk a, tell me a little bit about um, what you remember of Sauce and Sodas and how important it was sort of as a gathering place and what it meant to you. Well, um, it was a, a very busy uh, confection, we call it confectionery store today, I think it's called. And uh, it, was, it was almost like a drugstore, except it had, it had no drugs, it, had, it had a soda fountain. Every drugstore had a soda fountain in those days. And, and, and as someone mentioned before, George V, and, and his name, their name was Victor too, George Victor, was, uh, had a soda fountain in his store. There were four corners, obviously, on, on Richton and Dexter. Three of the stores were owned by Victor's. George V owned one of them, my dad owned one of the buildings in one corner, and there was a Victor Paint on, on, on the third corner. The fourth one, <laughs> I don't know who owned it, but that was kind of unusual in those days, or it would be unusual today, of course. But um, I remember the place very well. <laughs> I used to go in there when I had the money <laughs> to get a soda occasionally, but there were a lot of choices. You had a lot of choices. Uh, I think. Uh, 
Jack mentioned, the uh, Jack Robinson mentioned, the Eagle Dairy, and uh, all all the drug stores. They all had soda fountains. And uh, but I, I remember uh, Sausen's very well. Which one was the best? Yeah, I was going to say. Well, since Ralph Sausen asked me which one is the best, I, I'm going to tell you which one's the best. Sausen's was the best, and it was even the very best. <laughs> Unique about it. I mean, was it the atmosphere? Well, there, well, it, 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 well, of course, it was a family owned business. How about, sauce, how about uh, sausage was a unique family owned business? In those days, when you had a store, the family had the store. For example, in, in our case on um, Hastings Street, uh, when I was six years old, I was making cash. I was the only kid. In, in, in my in my class, they could could uh, could make change, you know. Uh, and when I was six seven years old, I used to have a box behind the cash register that I was able to, get, <laughs> to climb on and 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 uh, uh, make change. And I waited on customers when I was you know I couldn't see over the counter half the time, but um, that's the way it was. Assassins, you know. They're, they're, they're all the, the Hilbert was there, of course. He was the oldest, and then and Ralph was there, and. Um, and uh, Alan went to high school with me, your, uh, Alan Sassen. He was the second oldest, as I recall. But they, what was unique about it is it was very um, comfortable in there because, you, you, you know, you, although uh, Mr. Sassen Sr. was a, a kind of a brusque fellow and he, you'd take care of your business and you'd leave. But, it was, it was, but he was, you know, a good businessman and very comfortable in there. Subject, but I think it's interesting that you all went to high school together and, and that... Central High School. Central High School was about 95% Jewish in those days. And it was very hard. Uh, when I went to college, it was a vacation compared to a Central High School. It was very competitive. And uh, on the Jewish holidays, they didn't close the school, but no one was there. I mean, you know, e even the kids that weren't Jewish, they, they would skip school too. So. Uh, it was the few kids that came to school had private lessons in those days. Uh, it was a, uh, when I went to high school it was during World War II. And I graduated in 1944, and then everybody went in the Army right after, the, you know, all the men went in the Army right after they got out of high school, which I did too. And uh, they, they used to have um, certain activities for, for the kids, like uh, they had a place called Club La Salle. And Club La Salle was like a nightclub without, you know, without whiskey. And some of the people that were the entertainers at Club La Salle, they, part of the, they were kids in school, are famous in Hollywood today. For example, if you watch the, the Bravo uh, channel, uh, James Lipton, uh, he's, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the, the program, behind an actor studio, that that's the, that he's the host in actor studio. And there were a number of people that became it, it, quite active. As a matter of fact, one fellow by the name of Norman Wexler just died. He wrote Joe and some other things, and he he, he, he was very famous in, in the, the acting, not the acting, the writing profession. Most of the graduates of those schools at Central High School in those days went on to college, I would say, over 90 percent. And uh, most of them are professional people today. Their parents, interestingly enough, were all immigrants. I would say 80, 90 percent of the parents were not American-born. And I think that's one of the reasons it was so competitive, because education was so important. And uh, they, they, they were, it was a very up, up, upward mobile society. Chocolate drink. Let's talk about a, uh, a soda. No, I'm it sorry. wasn't a soda. He said there was a Coke. Was a Coke. Coke? Okay. Yeah. We've been retelling that story. Chocolate would have been worse. Anybody talk about making the chocolate syrup in the back of the oh, store? Yeah. In the basement. I'll sit with you there. In the basement. Yeah. It was, well, it depends. It was downstairs. It, it, in, uh, it was downstairs. On Dexter, it was, Dexter, it was, it was the the downstairs. Mm -hmm. But on 12th Street, 12th Street, it was in, in the back of the store. store. Mm -hmm. 
I thought stirring the, stirring uh, the pot. Right, stirring the pot. I thought, <clears throat> yeah, I remember your dad teaching me that, but I thought it was the cocoa that gave us a little high because we would inhale some of that. You know, yeah, powder right, right. you get dumped in. It was a hundred pound <laughs> bag. <laughs> we were, I think we walked out high every I, minute. That's very you know, I, I've asked a number of people for anecdotes. But Why don't we have you come right in here, Ralph? Yeah. 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 Ralph, would you bring me in here? Yeah. Ralph, yeah. Sure. The, the interesting one that, that, uh, that a lot of them, and all these are, you know, guys that are fairly well off at this point, how they used to steal comic books <laughs> and candy, and they'd walk out of the store because that's what the kids would do. I mean, you know, yeah, how exciting it was to walk out with having stolen something. I don't remember the stealing, but of course we wouldn't be aware of that. But I do remember very well the kids coming in and reading oh, yeah. the books right. while standing there. Absolutely. And my father always saying, either buy them or put them back. You know, yeah. you can't but he'd let them read it for it, a while. Oh, yeah, he'd let them read it for a while. And, uh, but I'm sure that to a great extent what you've talked about is the idea that uh, it, was a, it was a community. It, was, it definitely was. It was <clears throat> one block you had everything you have in a mall now. Mm. Shoemaker. Alan, uh, was, I, uh, when I was being interviewed, I talked about Central High School. Since you and I were classmates in, at Central, what was your impression of Central High School? Well, the students were smarter than the teachers. I think there were three teachers that were smarter. Uh, Hanish, uh, there was a... Uh, I would add my own editorial comment. The English teacher. Yeah. The students the, thought the they were teacher, smarter than the teachers. The, teacher. the students were smarter than well, the teachers. That's, that's Remember the math teacher? They certainly Mrs. thought they were. Heilman was her name? Heilberg? Uh, but, but... She was it was very hard, hard, wasn't it? Uh, I found it hard, you know. I, Central I mean, High School? Central High School was, was really it was fun. Competitive. It was competitive. Very and competitive. it was student against student is, is mm -hmm. what basically what did the whole thing. Um, and you had to know how to take exams. But that was that's always been. Because they were always the, the multiple choice type exams that I remember a lot of. And uh, uh, that we got there and, and then uh, the first couple of years in college. You remember during the war... We were taking certain classes that were prepared for the armed services. Uh, we had radio class, airplane oh, yeah. recognition oh, sure. class, uh, uh, and also Ottawell. Yeah, remember uh, Ottawell? Yeah, he was he he, uh, he ran uh, a lot of those classes that. Uh, um, uh, uh, you guys are he, older than me. Yeah, he 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 <laughs> had a fraternity. He had he had his own fraternity. No, when I was in Central, the, the war was over. Yeah, but yeah. I remember in the neighborhood. During the war, where we would, I was just a kid there in the Boy Scouts, and it was my job to be the, the street warden, and I'd have to go in every house and see to it that on the top level, the top person who lived on the top floor had a pail with sand and a shovel, just in case we were bombed. It's under a bomb. Yeah. And, and we had to retain that, so it was my job to cover one block as a Boy Scout. <laughs> And I did that about every four months. And for then the, remember the, the drives well, they had? For those people oh, sure. that don't know for sure, Dexter was never bombed during the war. <laughs> <laughs> it's been bombed since. <laughs> if you go by there, yeah. you know, since the riots of 67, it yeah. certainly looks bombed yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, well, 12th Street's gone. Yeah, yeah, 12th well, Street's gone. That's where the riots started. I mm -hmm. opened Store 31 on Rosa Parks Boulevard in Philadelphia. Yes, you did. Oh, my. Yes. Really? It's called Perry Drug Stores next to Farmer Jet. No. You know, it looks entirely different. Most people don't re realize this. There was a serious race riot in Detroit in 1943. Do you remember that? In sure. Belle Isle. On Belle Isle. It started mm -hmm. on Belle Isle. Well, my dad's store was down there. And um, the alarm rang, at the, uh, and they called us at the house. This, this is where I lived on, um, on Leslie. And um, that was Leslie Wilderman mm -hmm. on the corner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Across from the birds. Across from the birds. And um, the f it was a Sunday, it was a late Sunday night, it was really Monday morning. The phone rang, and, I, and of course I was six, 15 or 16 years old. And I, and I was, went to bed late, it was a Sunday night. And um, the phone rang, they said the alarm's on. 
which means normally that a fire engine passed by or the or a rat ate through a wire or something of that nature. So I, uh, I had to get my dad up to go down and see about the alarm. And so my mother said, well, what's going on? I said, I don't know, some kind of riot. She said, what do you mean some kind of a riot? I said, I don't know, the man said some kind of a riot. So she called the police. She says, don't go down there. And we went down there. He's going to go down. Oh, yeah. With my dad. He, was, he, was, he wasn't yeah. a big guy, but he had a lot of courage. Yeah. And <clears throat> so we had another fellow who had the pawn shop next door, Al, Al Schwartz. And he, he called him, and they went down together. And we drove down, and we crossed the streets like, I don't know, about 3 or 4 in the morning. Sunday, uh, Monday morning, actually. And all the alarms were going on Hastings. We drove down to Gratiot and drove mm -hmm. all the way up. It sounded like a, a, a symphony. I mean, this alarm, and they all had different tunes. So uh, either my dad or Al Short said, you know, we got to get out of here. Something's going on. And we didn't know what was going on. It was very quiet in the street. And as we were leaving, we got to, um, uh, I think Brush was one-way street, and John mm -hmm. was one-way street. So the one going north, and we stopped for a red light, and all of a sudden, I don't know where they came from, people started coming from both sides throwing rocks, and there was a Ford next to us. And uh, Al took off, and, and, and then I heard a shot. And, and I don't know if that Ford got away or not. And it was really uh, quite we were in the car at that We were in the car. Well, then for, um, we couldn't go down for three days because the city was just in the turmoil. It was, it was terrible. And, um, of course, it only affected a small portion of the city, primarily the black area. And, of course, you know, uh, the, the store was in the black area. Mm -hmm. And um, finally we went down. <laughs> Another cute story. There were a lot of phone calls going back and forth, a lot of rumors. And uh, all the receipts for the week were in the safe. And my dad had a gigantic safe, you know, mm -hmm. there. And so if somebody called and said, Ben, I got bad news. Your safe was, 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 was seen rolling out of your back doors. Oh, my God. They said, wait a minute, I don't have a black door. The, pr <laughs> <laughs> the, so first, somebody thing, else the first thing you do in, yeah. in, 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 in those areas is you, is you, you brick in all your, your back doors mm -hmm. and uh, any windows. Mm -hmm. So uh, we went down there with the National, National Guard was called, called in, and we went down there as follows. There was a National Guard Jeep with a 30 caliber mounted in front, and, uh, behind us, and there was a police car in front of us. And um, I still remember this very well. And we, we went into the store, and the, cr the streets were crowded. It was summertime. It was crowded, very busy. And um, I mean, the riot was it, over. No, well, the riot was over, except the, the people were in the streets. You know, and it wasn't normal. I mean, there, 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 was it a totally black area at that yeah, time? Yeah, it was, it was a totally black area. And as a matter of fact, I remember very well, there were, we had more mounted police than we had. Now we have only ceremonial mounted police. Those days you had mm -hmm. mounted police mm -hmm. for a purpose of, of, of crowd control. Well, there were four mounted police in the middle of a, a crosswalk. And they were so, the crowd was so crowded in that the horses couldn't move. Mm. And I mean, they were, they were just helpless. They were there. In any event, mm -hmm. they escorted us into the store. And it turns out that they destroyed the, the windows. And, the, and, but they, and all they had to do was push a little little door they didn't do that and the store was okay and so i went in we cleaned out the safe the, the, the merchandise was not was everything was okay mm. they're Pretty, good well Pretty the fortunate. the windows were yeah, demolished but and that but, that's but, but there was a, there was a paul's cut rate drugs which later moved to broadway mm -hmm. it was was part of our little oasis there and um they, they was cleaned out because they had liquor the place was absolutely cleaned out there was nothing left and um the, there was other, several, uh, most of the stores were cleaned out, which fortunately that, that my dad wasn't. When was the next race riot? That was 60 67. 67. 67. 67. Because, I mean, talking yeah. about being a jerk, I was doing practicing pediatrics at that time. We had patients in children's. I went down every single day. I went downtown to Children's Hospital because I had to see my patients, I mean, after all. Mm -hmm. So every day I was uh, driving through the whole area mm -hmm. down around Hastings mm -hmm. Street and driving through and down. Well, and they were, they were <coughs> on the boulevard, the expressway, the large expressway. Bring back the, just for a couple yeah. minutes, the store. CJ just, uh, and then you guys can, yeah, just a little bit yeah, more about the I'll, store and then yeah, I'm not sure and have some I'm more. Yeah, we're we're I'm right. curious, though, with Steve, just a historical question. When your family opened that store there, wasn't that an all-Jewish neighborhood? It was primarily. <laughs> and then that changed over a period of time? 
Yeah, it, it was it was a Jewish area, primarily a Jewish area then. As a matter of fact, my dad used to sell silk gloves. He tells the story of the Purple Gangsters. You know, the Purple Gang was a primarily Jewish um, mafia, 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 basically. Mm -hmm. And he said they used to practice, you know, pulling the gun, the guns out with the silk gloves on. My mother said, "Don't sell them anymore." He says, "A customer's a customer." <laughs> so. Whereas the story as I told previously about my father, <clears throat> this is probably untrue. With his finger. But supposedly chased the uh, Purple Gang mem uh, members out of the store, wouldn't allow them to be there. So they ended up at the uh, Crema Michigan Crema Michigan. Down the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that was a different deal. Yeah. Boeskis. Boeskis. Was a Boeskis. No, no, Crema Michigan. They, they went to well, the they they yeah. Yeah. Did, did you know that there was a... Um, First of all, a betting place by the Aster, and upstairs there was a game room. I didn't know that either. One of the, one of the guys I am presently playing his uh, golf with, his uncle, was a member of the Purple Gang, and they had uh, the Aster Theater was what two stores, three stores away from us, uh, three blocks away from us, something uh, like that. Two blocks near Virginia yes. Park, wasn't it? No, no, that, no, that was, was Lindman's People's Theater. Yes, no, the, and. Uh, and uh, that, that movie was, I think, uh, two blocks away. Yeah, well, and, and the Cream of Michigan was just about across the street from exactly, that. Exactly, exactly. And uh, now, did you tell the story about the finger? Yes, I did. Okay. I did tell that story. Because, uh, <clears throat> but I, I, he, was cap no. he was capable of destroying people. I mean, he really was. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> the way I Small told Small indentation for life. <laughs> I said, my father often had the last word, and if you wanted to have the last word with him, it was at the expense of getting the finger. <laughs> <laughs> or having him teach you how to drive. Well, yeah. if he was operating that store today, yeah. I think he'd be starting on his 50th or 20th sass and soda spread throughout the state. Oh, absolutely. No problem. Well, that would have been, that would have been Hilbert's no, 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 time, no, because yeah, that, Hilbert was the, the entrepreneur, and I also talked about this, he had, he had visions of, uh, first of all, promoting the chocolate syrup as a secret recipe. Right. As Jack and I discussed earlier, there's nothing secret about it. We just use a lot of good ingredients. Like sugar. Sugar <laughs> and, no, and, heavy and, and chocolate. Heavy, heavy on the chocolate. Heavy on the chocolate. Heavy on the chocolate. <clears throat> and uh, I, think, uh, I think you're right, Jack, that Hilbert had, we still had the business, would be... Uh, uh, would be uh, certainly, uh, the can the Perry drugs of candy stores. Well, <laughs> Hilbert, that's why Hilbert became an accountant, is because Hilbert, when he came back from the service, started to work with my dad, mm -hmm. and he did suggest that they start to do things like Zukins ended up doing, uh, and and really getting the ice cream business into a big deal. And Dad always said, you know, I made a living. I sent everybody to school. I don't have to do that sort of thing. And he always uh, um, rebelled against doing anything like that. So they ended up, uh, Hilbert went to school, and Dad continued to run the business. You, you know, but do you know why he was right? Who? Who's Which gonna, what? Your dad. Who's going to watch a cash register in the branch stores? <laughs> <laughs> Very true. <laughs> That's why he was successful. He right. watched we a cash always register. had a lot of family working in, uh, working in our Sure. Our stores, and uh, that certainly was one thing that was true of family. You know, you could trust them exactly. completely. What was the name of our cousin Fleischman that worked in the store for several years? The woman. You know what I mean? Oh, you're a big girl. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. yes. A tall, lovely person. I, I'm thinking her name was Lillian too, even though. <laughs> you don't remember? No, not at all. What? Why don't we? Uh, why don't we cut it? At, at okay, we just get our one. I don't have like a whole group. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. You guys can just talk about anything. All right. What's your sex? We? Right. <laughs> How's Uncle Max? Uncle Max has already been interviewed for this tape. As a matter of fact. How did he do? Uh, well, uh, you have to ask Nancy and CJ because I wasn't there, but I think he did pretty well. 